question of the day, does Ozempic, Monjaro, Saxenda, and medications in that class, do they cause hair loss? Well, if you look at the current literature, you're most likely going to get an answer, no. This is because during clinical trials of these medications, hair loss was not necessarily a direct side effect that was observed. However, since the medication came on the market, there have been so many complaints of hair loss, even including comments on this channel. But I decided to take a look at it myself to see if there is any kind of correlation that I can glean from any of the studies or any of the observations that are out there. Hello, my name is Quick, I'm a pharmacist. And in this video, I'm going to share with you three possible theories that I have come up with that I believe are contributing factors to people losing their hair while also losing weight on medications like Ozempic. I would also share with you some possible ways that you can mitigate this phenomenon if it does already happen to you. Now, since this information is of a general nature, my recommendation is that touch base with your own individual doctor for individualized care for your particular circumstances. Now, my first theory involves a condition called telogen effluvium, which occurs when the body is exposed to some external shock or some external stressor, such as a rapid weight loss. When this happens, it is possible for the body to actually begin shedding hair and I'll explain in a couple of seconds. Now, as you're already aware, Ozempic and medications in that class actually cause significant weight loss and usually the weight loss is quite rapid. So that can be interpreted as a significant shock or stressor to the body. Now to better understand this phenomenon, I'm going to briefly take you through the three stages of hair growth. The first stage is what we call the anagen stage or the growth stage. This is a, a stage where the hair follicles, the cells are dividing, the hair is actively growing and everything is fine. On the average, there are about 80 to 90 percent of the hair in this phase so that means that there's constant growth and then comes the next stage which is a, a transitional or transient stage called the cartagen phase the cartagen phase is typically a resting stage where the body is getting prepared to go into the next phase or the next stage so there's neither growth nor neither shedding so the, the hair is pretty much dormant and on the average about five percent of hairs usually are in the cartagen phase the next stage which is the important one is called the telogen phase or the shedding phase sometimes also called the resting phase but what happens in this stage is that the body is actually or the hairs are actually getting ready to shed so at the end of the telogen stage what happens is that the body actively sheds the hair and then the follicle prepares so that new hair is going to grow now on the average you have about five percent of your hairs in the telogen phase but what happens when your body is exposed to a stressor like rapid weight loss when you take medications like ozem is that you have about 70 percent of the hairs that were in the anagen phase or in the growth phase automatically or for some way reason getting into the telogen phase so you get to a point where not only are you not growing hair because the anagen phase has been abruptly cut short but you're also losing a significant amount of your hair and for some people about 50 to 70 percent of their hair is shed when the body is exposed to such a shock or when the body prematurely enters into the telogen phase now there are other factors that may cause the body to enter into the telogen phase but those are out of the scope of this video but for the purposes of this video we are looking at how rapid weight loss can shock the body to enter prematurely into the telogen phase now to back up this phenomenon of rapid weight loss causing hair loss i looked up a couple of studies and i found uh one from 2018 where 50 people had undergone some kind of a weight loss uh, surgery sleeve gastrectomy and what they noticed was that about half of the people reporting losing their hair as they were losing their weight as well. There's also another study that I found from 2021 where 112 women had undergone this sleeve gastrectomy and what they noticed was that 75% of those people reporting losing significant amount of hair at three to four months or so after the surgery. Now, while Ozempic and Manjaro and Saxenda are not necessarily, it is you're not comparing apples to apples in terms of a medication to surgery but the common denominator is that both procedures whether you're taking the medication or whether you're having a, a surgery the common denominator is that there's rapid weight loss which is a significant shock to the body enough to send the body into that telogen phase that i explained so that is one theory and there's good news this uh, this phenomenon is reversible and i'll touch on that in a couple of seconds but at least that is establishing one potential reason why people may be losing hair when they take medications like Ozempic. The second reason that I came up with is hormonal changes. Rapid weight loss can also cause changes in the hormones that can lead to hair loss. Now, rapid weight loss has been demonstrated to cause a decrease in estrogen and an increase in androgens, which are male hormones. Now, while this is not necessarily a bad thing, the truth of the matter is that if you have a decrease in your estrogen levels, hair growth, 
slows down and the hair actually becomes thinner. On the flip side, the decrease in estrogen may also cause increase in androgens or the male hormones, which is notorious for causing hair loss. As a matter of fact, medications used to treat male pattern bald baldness are typically anti-androgens because they're supposed to negate or stop the hair loss caused by these androgen hormones. So that's the second point. The third point is nutrient deficiencies. Now it is no secret that ozempic and medications in that class cause significant appetite suppression and therefore people tend to eat fewer calories. Well, eating fewer calories also increases the risk of taking in the vitamins or the nutrients that are necessary for hair growth. So particularly I can think of iron, zinc, vitamin D and vitamin B. All these are essential for hair growth. So in a bit to lose weight, and in taking medications like Ozempe, which leads to taking fewer calories, most people end up not taking enough nutrients. And this leads also to hair loss. So that's the bad news. So what's the good news? Well, the good news is that telogen effluvium, which I discussed at the first point, is a reversible condition. As long as the body moves out of that shock or that stressor, the body returns to normal. The telogen phase ends and the body goes back into the anagen phase where the body starts actively growing hair. This usually occurs in about three to four months after the stressor is stopped. So the idea is that you're not going to be continuously losing weight on a medication like Ozempic, there's got to be a point in time when you're going to stabilize. And if you do so, then the body will come out of that shock state and your hair will start to grow back. Now, in lieu of waiting for your body to naturally take care of this condition by itself, you can actually do something about it. You can obviously dis discuss with your doctor to see any of these over-the-counter medications like Rogaine, uh, Minoxidil is appropriate for you to kickstart your hair growth again. You should also consider taking um, some multivitamins, multivitamins that are high in iron, zinc, uh, B vitamins, particularly a supplement called biotin. When it comes to biotin, in the studies that I referenced, there was one particular group where they isolated 22 people who they found out that their weight loss surgery had made them deficient in biotin and they gave them biotin. Of the 22, 17 uh, of them reported that they had their hair coming back to normal. But most importantly, try and eat a well-balanced diet. Make sure you're getting all your nutrients, uh, make sure you're getting enough protein, you're getting enough rest. And by all means, if there are any other stresses in your life, do well to remove them because that will also contribute to your hair loss. Hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on your screen now another video I did explaining what happens to you when you stop taking Ozempic. Stay blessed. Catch you on the next video.